Welcome to Redemption Today Podcast. My name is Rigo Mercado, and on this podcast, I provide Bible teaching that encourages and helps Christians grow in faith, live in victory, and exercise all their redemptive rights in Christ. Let's jump right into today's Bible lesson. Hello, everybody. On this episode, I continue our series called Redemption Realities. On our last episode, we answered the question, what is redemption? We learned that redemption means to buy back. Jesus redeemed us from sin and the effects of the fall. The price he paid was his precious blood because he was our perfect substitute and sacrifice. Today, we start answering the question, what did Jesus redeem us from? So in this lesson, I'm going to cover how Jesus redeemed us from death. The Bible talks about three types of death. There is spiritual death, physical death, and eternal death. Then we're going to learn how he's redeemed us from the authority and power of the kingdom of darkness and Satan. So let's start with our foundational text found in Colossians chapter 1, verse 12 through 14. It reads, giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in the light. He has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of the Son of His love, in whom we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of sins. We have an inheritance in Christ. He has delivered us from the power of darkness and translated us into the kingdom of the Son of His love. We have redemption through his blood. I love that scripture. So the reason we have been redeemed is because Jesus was our substitute on the cross and he redeemed us with his blood. Our redemption would not be possible unless there was a substitute for us. Mankind sinned, Adam and Eve sinned as our representatives, and the penalty of that sin was was spiritual death, physical death, and eternal death. So we couldn't redeem ourselves. There had to be a perfect substitute for us, and that was Jesus. In Isaiah chapter 53, verses 4 through 6, it tells, it tells us how Jesus was our substitute on the cross. It says here, starting in verse 4 of Isaiah 53, Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we esteemed them stricken, smitten by God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. So we see here that Jesus was our perfect substitute. He bore our sins. He carried our sickness, our disease. He was wounded for our transgressions. And our peace came because he was punished. He was chastised for our peace. And by his stripes were healed. So Jesus was our substitute, our perfect substitute. He was our sin bearer on the cross. So he bore our sin and he gave us his righteousness. He was our perfect sacrifice. And we have to realize that Adam was humanity's representative at creation. Whatever happened to Adam will happen to all his descendants. And when he disobeyed, he died spiritually and physically eventually. Sin came into the world. Death came into the world. And we partook of that and we all died spiritually. We're all separated from God. We're all separated from him. But the good news is that Jesus came as the second and last Adam as our representative And because he obeyed and lived the perfect life that Adam should have lived, he was able to go on the cross as a spotless lamb without sin and die in our place. In Romans 5.19, it says, For as by one man's disobedience, talking about Adam, for as by one man's disobedience many were made sinners, so also by one man's obedience many will be made righteous. And that was Jesus. Through Jesus' obedience, we were made righteous. He was born from from a virgin Mary. He was born as a human. God took on flesh as a human being, 100% God, 100% man. And because he was a man and he lived a perfect life before God, a sinless life 
for us, he was able to redeem us and take our place and legally buy us back from the hand of the enemy. So again, what did Jesus redeem us from? Number one, he redeemed us from death. Now the Bible talks about three types of death. There's spiritual death, physical death, and eternal separation from God, or what's called the second death. So in, in Romans 6.23, it, it reads, For the wages of sin is death. The wages of sin is death. When Adam and Eve sinned, they died spiritually. They were born again from, from life to spiritual death. Spiritual death means separation from God. Their spirits were disconnected from the life of God, and they received the fallen nature of their new Lord, Satan, which is spiritual death. It was spiritual death. So Jesus has redeemed us from spiritual death. So when Adam and Eve sinned, they were separated from the life and nature of God. Their spirits died spiritually. They were disconnected from God. And that's spiritual death. So if we don't receive by faith the free gift of eternal life Jesus that Jesus provided for us before we die, we will be eternally separated from God. This is called the second death or eternal death. So first came spiritual death, separation from God. Jesus, so Jesus has redeemed us from spending eternity separated from him. And that is eternal death. He redeemed us from eternal death. So what's amazing is when you place your trust in Jesus as your Lord and Savior, he gives you eternal life. What is eternal life? Not just going to heaven when you die, but eternal life is the life and nature of God that the Holy Spirit uh, recreates you with. The Holy Spirit recreates your spirit and you become a new creation in Christ. Now you're connected to God again. Now you're alive unto God. Now you, you want to live for Him. You want to serve Him. Your heart is for Him. You have been delivered from sin and He's given you a new nature. His nature in your spirit is alive unto Him. You're a new creation in Christ. In Romans 6, 23, the latter part of that verse, it says, But the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. And then in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, talking about the new creation, it says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. We're new creations in Christ. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things are new. So the new birth, your spiritual new birth, is part of our inheritance in Christ. That's what Jesus redeemed us from. He redeemed us from spiritual death and gave us eternal life. And how do you receive that? If you're listening and you haven't yet received eternal life, it's really simple. The Bible says in Romans 10.9, it says, If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. It's that simple. You just say, Jesus, I believe, in you. I believe in you. Thank you for dying on the cross for my sins. Thank you for being my representative. Thank you for taking all my sins away and forgiving me. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. Come into my heart. I trust in you for my salvation. And at that moment, the Holy Spirit comes in and recreates your spirit and gives you eternal life. You receive the life and nature of God. All your sins are washed away by the precious blood of Jesus. And you become a child of God. And you're taken out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of the Son of His love. Amen. It's that simple. So He redeemed us from spiritual death, from eternal death, and also from physical death. We will receive new resurrected bodies, glorified bodies, when Jesus returns. In 1 Corinthians 15, verse 20 through 22, it says, But now... Christ is risen from the dead and has become the firstfruits of those who have fallen asleep or died. For since by man came death, meaning, remember, through Adam came death, but by man, which is Jesus, by man also came the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ all shall be made alive. And if you're in Christ, when you place your trust in him, as your Lord and Savior, if you did that, you are in Christ and you will be made alive. Your body will be resurrected. 
in the name of Jesus. Amen. So we have been redeemed from physical death. Our bodies will be resurrected when Jesus returns. So we've been redeemed from the entirety of the effects of death because of the fall. Jesus is our great redeemer, and he redeemed us from death. Amen. So you are delivered from all that because of what Jesus did as our substitute. So not only did Jesus redeem us from, from death, spiritual, physical, and eternal death, he also redeemed us from the authority and power and kingdom of Satan. Satan is no longer your master and Lord. When Adam and Eve sinned and obeyed the enemy, they took on his nature, which is spiritual death, and Satan took the authority that Adam had on the earth, and he became the god of this world, little g, meaning he took over everything, and death came, and sickness came, and disease came, and he's wreaking havoc in this world. And then when Jesus came, he destroyed them on the cross. When he died and rose from the dead, he destroyed him. He destroyed his power and took the, that authority back and gave it to us, his church, his believers. We've been delivered from the kingdom of darkness. So Jesus now is our Lord, and we have been translated out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of God's dear Son. So Satan no longer has any right to your life as a believer. Jesus defeated Satan and took back that authority that Adam forfeited in the fall. That authority over we have authority over all the works of Satan in Jesus' name. That's what the Lord gave us when he redeemed us. In Colossians 2:15, in the Amplified Version, it says, talking about Jesus, when he had disarmed the rulers and authorities, those supernatural forces of evil, evil operating against us. He made a public example of them, exhibiting them as captives in his triumphal procession, having triumphed over them through the cross. So Jesus disarmed the enemy. Those evil forces operating against us, he disarmed them, and he made a public example of them. You know, in, in Roman times, when this was written, when, the, when Rome conquers cities, they will have their enemies march in front of the town to show that these inhabitants have been conquered. They've been stripped of their power, and there was a procession in the streets. In the same way, Jesus destroyed the enemy, exhibiting them as captives in his triumphal procession. He triumphed over them through the cross. So he gained victory over the enemy, and that victory is ours because of Jesus. And then in Colossians chapter 1, verse 13, says he has delivered us from the power or authority of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of the Son of his love. And conveyed us into the kingdom of the Son of his love. So he took us out of the kingdom of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of God. So we change lordships. We change kingdoms. Satan no longer has authority over you. He can't harass you anymore. He can't keep you in, in bondage to sin anymore. He can't oppress you anymore. He can't keep you sick and down anymore. You've been redeemed from his authority, and now you operate in the kingdom of God where there's eternal life, there's protection, there's healing, there's provision, there's peace, there's power in Jesus' name. And in Psalm 107 too. It says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom he has redeemed from the hand of the enemy. Again, we have been redeemed from the hand and authority of the devil in Jesus' name because all of all he did for us. We have been redeemed from his hand. And lastly, in 1 John 3, verse 8, it says, he who sins is of the devil, for the devil has sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. That's why Jesus came. Jesus came for the purpose to destroy all the works of Satan, to defeat death, to defeat sin, to take the authority back from the enemy and strip him of his power. Now we have authority in Jesus' name. We have been redeemed from him. We can exercise our authority over him and resist the enemy in Jesus' name. No weapon formed against us shall prosper. The Bible says we're more than conquerors through Christ who loved us. And then it says that we're 
in Revelations 12, um, verse 11, I believe it says that we overcome Satan by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimony. We overcome him. We're overcomers because of Jesus. So Jesus redeemed us from spiritual death. He redeemed us from physical death and eternal separation from God. And he gave us eternal life. The remedy to spiritual death and physical death and eternal separation is receiving Jesus as Lord and Savior, receiving your inheritance in Christ, receiving the new birth. The Holy Spirit comes in, regenerates your spirit. You become a child of God, a new creation in Christ. And when you die, your spirit will go to heaven. But when Jesus comes back, he's going to raise your body. You're going to be resurrected. You'll be resurrected. We have redemption over death. And then Jesus redeemed us from the power and authority of Satan. Jesus defeated him through his death, through his burial and resurrection. Jesus, as the perfect man and substitute for our sin, took back the authority that the first Adam gave away to Satan. Jesus took back that authority and delegated that authority to his church, which is all the believers in Christ Jesus. We have authority. Isn't that wonderful? Our great redemption that Jesus bought us back from sin. He bought us back from, from death and eternal separation from him and from the authority of the enemy. All that is ours. All of that is ours in Christ Jesus. All we have to do is receive it by faith and walk it out day by day. It is yours. Amen. Well, I pray this teaching was a blessing to you. I thank you so much for listening. And remember to live out your redemption in Christ today. Until next time. Thank you for listening to the Redemption Today podcast. If you enjoyed today's episode, please consider subscribing or even rating and reviewing so that more people can connect with us and be blessed by these teachings. Thank you so much for listening. Until next time.